The first UI kit release in 2022 is huge. We have refined the sticky and parallax components so that now you can create stunning sticky parallax effects out of the box. Additionally, we completely refactored the image component and improved it with new features. And we finally dropped the IE11 support. Let's jump right in! To give you more control over the duration of the parallax animation, we added new start and end options to the parallax component. By default, the animation starts when the top border of the element enters the viewport and ends when its bottom border leaves the viewport. The new options allow you to offset the start and end points. Values can be set in any dimension units, namely viewport height, percent and pixels. The percent unit relates to the element's height. Both options allow basic mathematic operands, plus and minus. In this example, the animation will start 50 pixels after 100% of the element's height enters the viewport. And it ends 50 pixels before the element reaches the viewport. For even more control, animation stops can have a second value in percent for the position. This is very similar to the CSS linear gradient syntax. In this example, the animation starts on its initial position, moves to the left, till it's at 40% of its duration, then quickly moves to the right, till it's at 60%, and finally moves back to its initial position. Additionally, we also cleaned up the component and fixed some edge cases. Next, the sticky component can now handle oversized content much better. Till now, content larger than the viewport could not be sticky. Now, oversized content will scroll down and stick to the bottom of the viewport, but if you change the scroll direction, the sticky content will immediately scroll up and stick to the top of the viewport. Yes, you heard it right! Elements can now also stick to the bottom of the viewport, for example a cookie banner. We added a new position option with top, bottom and auto values to define the sticky behavior. If you set the value to auto, the element will stick to the top of the viewport, but if its content is larger than the viewport, it will stick to the bottom of the viewport. Additionally, just like with the parallax component, we also added support for basic math operands for the sticky offset option. And again, there are even more fixes and smaller improvements for the sticky component. Now to the most interesting part. If you combine the sticky and parallax components, you can achieve some stunning sticky parallax effects directly in your iKit. To grasp how the following effects work, let me first explain the basic concept behind sticky parallax effects. First of all, we have a container which is multiple viewports high. This will define the duration of the parallax animation. Within this container, we have a sticky container, which has the height of one viewport. It in turn contains the actual content with the parallax animations. As a result, the content will not scroll out of the viewport, but instead it will have the parallax animation while you are scrolling. Now let's see it in action. We have created a dedicated showcase in the UIKit tests for the sticky parallax. Simply wow, right? All these effects are built without custom JavaScript, just pure UI kit. In order to achieve the sticky parallax effects without any custom CSS, we have added some new utility classes to UI kit. There's a class to set a negative Z index, classes for object fit and position, as well as new height viewport classes. But that's not all. UIKit 3.12 also comes with a big update for the image component. Since all modern browsers support lazy loading images and Safari 15.4 is on its way to join them, we deprecated the UK image attribute for the image element. Instead, you should use the native loading lazy attribute. This also means we no longer add an empty placeholder image so that now image elements need width and height attributes to prevent layout shifts. So what is the image component for? It brings all the features from image elements like lazy loading and responsive images to background images. In this release, we added even more features. 
In addition to lazy loading, background images can now also have the loading eager attribute to avoid lazy loading in the first visible viewport. We already support responsive images with the source set attribute for background images. And now we even added the sources option with source set, media and type parameters to fully emulate all the features of the picture element. For example, this feature allows you to offer alternative image formats like WebP and AVIV for background images. So the image component got heavily refactored and also no longer relies on session storage to check for cached images. By the way, other components now also support the loading lazy attribute. The SVG component will inject inline SVGs as they enter the viewport, and slideshow and slider components will automatically remove the loading lazy attribute from adjacent slides so they will immediately be displayed. Since Microsoft will retire Internet Explorer 11 in June 2022, we have decided to drop IE 11 support for UIKit as well. This allows us to leverage latest web technologies, meaning all the ECMAScript 2015 features like promises, classes, arrow functions, and more. And of course, this results in smaller CSS and JavaScript file size. There are some small breaking changes for the image and parallax components, so please take a look at the migration guide. For further release discussions or to report issues, visit our Discord chat. UIKit 3.12 allows you to create stunning sticky parallax effects with ease, and it completely modernizes the image component. As you all know, we're eagerly waiting to start working on UIKit 4, which is only one new theme per release away, fingers crossed. And now, go ahead and try out those animations yourself. As always, we're looking forward to your feedback, so let us know what you think in the comments below.